see this packing. Parabellum. <laughs> One, Luke Immerse Prime here, so it is time for another movie review today, and this time it's going to be for what is the third instalment of my favourite action thriller franchise of all time, and this is the last one that I'll be filming so far until, of course, the release of a spin-off ballerina, because I've already reviewed the fourth instalment of this franchise, and this franchise, as you probably guess by the title and thumbnail, is the John Wick franchise, and the film I'm going to be reviewing is, of course, none other than 2019's John Wick Chapter 3, Parabellum. So, this was once again directed by Chad Stahelski from a screenplay by Derek Karlstad, Shay Hatton, Chris Collins and Mark Abrams, and based on a story by Derek Karlstad. So, how was this film made then? So, following of course the, the success of the first two films, Stahelski of course had plans for a third movie, and this was announced in June 2017 with a confirmation of the return of my favorite actor Keanu Reeves as the main character John Wick himself and Derek Karlstad to write the story. And many of the returning cast also came back as well, such as, for example, Lawrence Fishburne, Ian McShane, and also as well, old Lance Reddick, may he rest in peace, among a few others as well, alongside a new cast of actors. So, Chad Stelke's return was also confirmed as director in January 2018, and filming then began in May 2018, and lasted through un until November, with filming locations including New York City and Casablanca. The film premiered at the Regal Union Square in New York City on May 9th, 2019 and was released in the United States on May 17th by Lionsgate. It received generally positive reviews from critics with praise for the action sequences, visual style and Keanu Reeves' performance. The film grossed $327.7 million worldwide and took just 10 days to become the highest grossing film in the franchise. So, when it comes to my reaction to this film then, so... I was able to watch this film for the first time by Amazon Prime in 2021 when I finally managed to catch up with watching the franchise because I've been delayed for many reasons. And when I watched this film, I once again absolutely loved it. Like, wow. Just like every other film in the franchise, this film for me is just awesome. And I definitely really love it. And I've rewatched it many times and I, of course, also have it as this Blu-ray steelbook as well. And it's definitely, in my opinion, a really amazing film, just like the rest of the franchise is. Because, in my opinion, there's no bad films in the John Wick franchise when it comes to the four films I've seen. So, now, what is this film about, then? So, after gunning down a member of the high table being the Crown Lord Santino D'Antonio, and the high table, of course, being the Shadow Week International Assassin's Guild, legendary hitman John Wick finds himself stripped of the organisation's protective services, and he's now, of course, excommunicado. Now stuck with a bounty on his head of millions of dollars, he must find his way through the streets of New York as he becomes the target of the world's most ruthless killers. So, now what do I think is great about this film then? So, I definitely think, just like the first two films, it retains the charm they had, absolutely, in my opinion. And it gives new ideas and new lore to a franchise with new adventures. And I think he does an absolutely phenomenal job doing it once again. And I think he's got a really great cast of actors, so... Keanu Reeves, of course, returns as John Wick, and my favourite actor, once again, does an absolutely phenomenal job playing my favourite role of his in this film, as always. Like, he makes John such an absolute badass, and definitely, in my opinion, one of the best cinematic characters of all time. I just absolutely love him as John. And I also, as well, definitely, as I said before, think that this franchise wouldn't be the franchise it is without his dedication to a role, because... He's done so much training in, as the character in preparation and, and many of his own stunt work as well, including in this movie. So I've got to really admire Keanu's dedication to a role because I don't think these films would have been as awesome as they were without his dedication to a role because you can tell how much he cares for playing John. He even said himself that while it's hard work, he loves it. So that's definitely awesome that he's showing great commitment right there. When it comes to other returning cast members as well, I also once again love the return of Lawrence Fishburne as the Bowery King. I love how compared to John Wick Chapter 2, where he didn't really appear until sort of all the end, end of that movie, in this film he has more presence, which I definitely really appreciated. So, I love seeing more of him, and Lawrence Fishburne's a great actor, once again, of course, collaborating with, with Keanu for the Matrix trilogy. And, and, he, and Barry King is definitely my second favorite role, he's behind Morpheus and the Matrix, and he once again delivers a, a great performance as the King, absolutely. <laughs> Long live Barry King. And, 
when it comes to overturning characters. I also definitely want to get a little return of Ian McShane as Winston, who is the owner of the New York Continental. I definitely think Ian McShane has always done a phenomenal job playing Winston, a very mysterious character who has been brought to life so well in these films by Ian McShane. Like, who just absolutely nails every time he plays him, especially in this movie. And I also saw once again love the return of the legendary Lance Reddit, may he rest in peace, as a, as a concierge of a New York Continental, Sharon. And we sadly lost Lance way too soon, which is a really massive shame. But Sharon will always be my awesome favourite wall of his, and my second favourite character in the franchise behind John himself. And I especially love how in this film they gave Sharon a lot more to do, because... We, we of course get to see him in action and he got to show off lots of his skills as the concierge where he's an awesome bodyguard and we see him in action and with his weapons like wow yeah Lance Reddit made Sean an absolute badass in this film most definitely then again the character in my opinion is always badass even though or he's of course the Khan concierge we all know and love just badass right there yeah Lance Reddit is an absolute legend rest in peace Lance and when it comes to the new characters introduced in this film I definitely really love the addition of Halle Berry as Sophia. Halle Berry is one of my favorite actresses, and Sophia, in my opinion, oh, was an absolute badass in this film. And she's, of course, the manager of the Casablanca Continental Hotel in Morocco. And I definitely think that she gave a really great performance as Sophia in this. And you can tell that, like with many other characters, she's got history with John, which is which which can be, can be said for lots of other characters we meet in the franchise, including her. And I think Halle Berry gave a really great performance and she did lots of training for her role too as well. And I must say, but just like how I personally think Keanu Reeves has not aged, I personally think Halle Berry has also not aged either because she looks great for her age. Like, it's so hard to believe that she's in her late 50s, it's especially when, when I see her in this film because she'd have been about probably 53 the, the year the film came out and she doesn't look like she's aged at all. She looks really great for her age in this film. And because of all the intense stunts that she does in the fighting, just wow. She, she was definitely very committed to this film, most definitely. And I also, as well, definitely really love as well, the addition of Mark Dacascos as the Assassin Zero, who, of course, is the owner of that of that uh, sushi bar in New York. And I definitely really love his performance in this. And he's also one of my favorite martial artists of all time as well when it comes to films. And I think as Zero, he made him a really cool villain. And what's also pretty interesting about Zero is I think he's quite a unique villain because while he is a, he's a ruthless assassin, there's no denying that, it's pretty cool how, despite, of course, being ordered to kill John Wick, he's actually a, a big fan of John. And even his students are fans of John as well. So, like, wow. Never thought you'd ha you'd be a fan of a hitman and, and be ordered to kill him. Like, wow. But this film definitely shows that it can happen. And and I definitely think that he gave a great performance and with lots of really brilliant stunts he did, especially in the fight scenes. And I also, as as well, definitely really, really love his point character in this too, like, when it comes to the law of the franchise, I definitely really love how this film introduced as well oh, more when it comes to high tables such as, for example, The Elder in Morocco. That was definitely, in my opinion, a very cool addition. I definitely love that. And when it comes as well to the other gravings that this film does, I love how we also get more of John's backstory. That was definitely really cool. And it's revealed as well that John's actual name is, of course, Jardini Jovanovic. And... And, of course, we also as well get to see, of course, the director of the Ballet Theatre, uh, who is played by Angelica Houston. Angelica Houston is a great actress, and I definitely think her addition in this film was definitely really great. And I can't wait to see her come back in Ballerina, the spin-off film, um, of course, coming out later this year. I'm very excited for that. And so I definitely love how, of course, being introduced more lot to a franchise by featuring the Elder for High Table, who John's, of course, got to who'd be of service to if he wants to be free of the excommunicado. And, and of course, how he got more, his back, so, such as, of course, his name in be, being Jardini Jovanovic, and, and of course, meeting the director as well. And we even as well got some, some ballerinas in the film Training for the Assassins, and we even as well got to see the character Rooney, who was, of course, going to be the main character in the ballerina film. In this, she was playing by the ballerina Unity feeling, but of course, in, in ballet, she was going to play by Anna, Anna Diarmas, which I'm very excited to see. And... Aside from this great cast of actors as well, I definitely really loved the action scenes in this film. Just like the first two films, they definitely really delivered in this film, absolutely. Like, this film is, is full of just absolutely awesome action scenes, which, which are fantastically paced. For example, the opening fight scene where John's escaped from the assassin in New York, when, when of course, the Unicardo order begins. Like, it's just a very intense start right there, kicking off from the epic cliffhanger from Chapter 2. Like, just wow. 
and also as well the fights in Morocco against of course Sophia's boss who is of course um called um called Barada played by Jerome Flynn Jerome Flynn definitely did a very good job making Barada a very despicable character especially because he shot one on of you know, Sophia's dogs thankfully the dog survived because he shot where the armor was so thankfully the dog survived but my heart was pounding in, in that scene because because I was scared the dog would get killed but thankfully not so I totally understand Sophia's motivation to fight him and his men totally because yeah she, she was definitely the right to fight them and he definitely had it coming when she shot him in both his legs and crippled him and also as well I also love the fight scene where John returns to New York and he gets to a continental safety as well that was definitely really cool and also as well, I really love the fight scene taking place at the content for itself. And like I said before, I love how they gave Sharon action scenes in this film to improve it. He's an absolute badass, despite being the concierge. He's actually got skills as a fighter himself, just like John. That was really cool. Like, that entire fight scene was, was just pure epicness right there. And I think as well, coupled with, uh, as well, Bivaldi's Four Seasons Winter Scott, as, as it was building up, it was just, in my opinion, a great way to start it right there. Like, that was just, in my opinion, just awesome right there. And also a sword fight as well was also, in my opinion, really cool in that glass room as well. And you know, I said before about Zeal being a big fan of John Wick. Well, he, of course, actually talked to John about how it was it was an awesome fight. When, of course, he's been defeated. So despite being defeated, he was able to, of course, talk to John about how much he enjoyed the fighting, really. So, yeah, he got to meet him, but sadly, the cost of his life. And, and of course, as well, this film, like the second film, also as well has a pretty awesome cliffhanger as well. Because at the end of the film, Winston agrees to a parlay with, with of course, the high table's adjudicator. So he can, of course, um, stop the attack from the hotel. And, and then John, of course, comes up to the top of the Continental. And after this as well, Winston, and then, of course, is able to allow John to escape the adjudicator by shooting him. And he falls onto the street below. Now, it, it may look like, of course, he's, going, he's, of course, killing John. Especially because he says, sorry, John, I don't see any other way. But... There's a bit of a detail that I did notice when I first watched the film, which is why, personally, I don't think Winston was actually trying to kill John. Because when, of course, of John goes up to Winston and asks, you know, Winston, you can see Winston give him a very subtle nod. So he was basically encouraging John to play along, basically, and, and go to, of course, the roof, because he was, he was looking at the, at the roof area. So... He was basically, of course, us in on the idea. And, of course, Sharon's line as well, which is, Will, please, sir. So, I think Sharon was also in on it as well. And also, as well, if Winston really wanted to kill John, he'd have probably shot him in the head. But he didn't. He shot him where his armour is and allowed John to fall off. And, thankfully, John survived the fall because he was able to break his fall by landing on several of those shelters as it was falling down. But, sadly, he was pretty injured. But, thankfully, he survived. After this, of course, Winston and gets his position as manager of a hotel back, following, of course, being stripped of it, of course, for refusing to abdicate. And and after that, as well, the Barry King's men then retrieve John, and they take him to a Barry King who's in an underground bunker, who recovering from, of course, his seven cuts, which he received as well for help, helping John kill Santino D'Antonio. And then he and John agreed to join forces against the high table. So, ooh... And that was definitely, in my opinion, a really awesome cliffhanger, which, of course, would lead into Chapter 4, which definitely, as well, delivered really well following, of course, from this film. And I've also got a film that Ballerina will also, as well, lead on from this film really well, too, because John, of course, is going to be in that film, as well, which is definitely very exciting, and I really can't wait for it. So, I really do hope that Ballerina will deliver from that cliffhanger as well, most definitely. And aside from, of course, a great cast and action scenes, and also the epic cliffhanger... I also, as well, definitely really love the musical score in this, which, which was composed by Tyler Bates and George A. Richard once again. Just a really badass soundtrack, which is ju just what you need for an, for an action thriller movie. Like, the John Wick theme, for example, plays for a movie, which is definitely really great to listen to. I've also, as I mentioned, that in the scene where, of course, the, the, the high-level forces are about a breach in the consensus for a fight, you can hear Vivaldi's Four Seasons Winter theme played by Winston on his record player. Which is definitely, in my opinion, a brilliant way to build up to a scene. Just made it much more exciting and epic. Like, just a very intense start and you know something's about to go down. So, yeah, this film is just absolutely awesome. And I definitely really love it. And it's definitely, in my opinion, a great way to continue the franchise following, of course, the epic cliffhanger from the second film. However, if I was thinking of any bad qualities of this film, I'd probably say that, um, so, for example, 
I personally was not really a fan of the Adjudicator. I thought she was a pretty unlikable character, in my opinion. Wasn't really a fan of her, to be completely honest. Like, I just thought that she was just, just very insufferable, to be completely honest. I couldn't really stand her very much. And also, as well, when it comes as well to John offering a service to a high table when he meets the Elder, he does something which I thought was pretty gruesome, where he has to cut off his finger, which his ring's on. And, oh, that scene, in my opinion, was just brutal and hard for me to watch. Like, goodness me, that was brutal. Yeah. And also, oh, as, well, as well, um, when it comes to other gory scenes, this one also has quite a few of them because it goes pretty dark. So, just for example, the scene where John's fighting at the start and he stabs one, one of his enemies in the eye. Like, oh, that was just so brutal. So... Other than that, though, I still think the film is awesome. It's just for a few quarter sets. So, just for example, I wasn't a fan of the Adjudicator as a character. And also, as well, I, did, I also I felt some of the scenes were pretty graphic, in my opinion, hard for me to watch, really. And I also, as well, I'll feel that while I did love Sophia in this film, I, I didn't really like how they didn't give her much closure after she, of course, leaves John in the desert because we unfortunately never saw her again after she left John to go and find the Elder, sadly. So, I would love to if maybe she appeared again, and maybe towards the end of the film or something. But sadly, we unfortunately never saw her again, and sadly we didn't see it in the next film, which is very unfortunate. But, nonetheless, for this film, it's just absolutely awesome. And if you love the first two films, I can't recommend this film enough, because it's awesome. It delivers fantastically from a cliffhanger from the second film. So, if you want to see an epic continuation from the second film, then please watch this, because it's absolutely amazing. So... Anyway guys, this is me of course doing my review for 2019's John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum. So, if I was to give this film a score out of 10, well, because of those few bad qualities that I said with, with this film, I'd probably give it a very solid score of probably 9.5 out of 10. That's what I'd give it. It's still in my opinion an absolutely awesome film, definitely worth a watch in my opinion. So, you know the drill guys, be sure to give this video a like, also be sure to tell me in the comments what you guys think of John Wick Chats 3 Power Bellum, if you've seen it, let me comment below what you think of it, also be sure to join Team Power by pressing subscribe and this coming in the future, and be seeing you.